it's most of the images uh, are shot in Piazza, and some of them are in Mercato, and others are in Cassange. This is one of the architectures in Piazza that I find interesting. And when I was taking this image, uh, I was thinking about Bole, and we don't see this kind of people um, most of the time um, in that surrounding. The background here is a nightclub, and the boy usually um, sells his stuff here, and he has um, customers. Um, this is in Mercato. Um, I took this portrait um, uh, in Tadlautil, um, in, in Piazza. His name is Tamaskan, he's 27. He came from the town of Hosanna to Addis Ababa four years ago. Um, after failing greeting, uh, he now works for a hotel in Piazza as a night shift guard. Um, he recently purchased a piece of land and he's still saving money to build a house on it. I took this photo in Casanches. Um, so I met, uh, sun I think it was Sunday morning, I met this guy um, on the streets and um, I was telling him what I do. And he was interested and he, he offered me to take me to, he offered to take me to his home. Um, I met his friend who still didn't wake, wake up then. Um, and afterwards, um, his home was not organized enough. Um, the bed sheets were not done yet, so I decided to take a picture of the wall instead of the disorganized home. I took this in Mercato. This is between Aratkilo and Piazza. Um, as most of you know, Rebecca is uh, completely demolished now. And uh, this is one of the guys who's still living there and who is still making the living out of um, the, um, the furniture that he construct. He's, uh, he's, he was welding when I, I was taking this picture. Um, this is Besfek Adasafa. I met him last week in Piazza. Um, he says Lothar is for a living. Um, he is a father of three, and he has been recently separated from his wife, but he still supports them, supports them with what he makes. This is Abrara. He works in the building um, just beside the race engineering, I guess, and he works for the coffee production company. The old buildings has, uh, has been demolished in Mercato, are being demolished in Mercato, in Piazza, as well as in Cassange. So after some time, maybe after six months or one year, um, they will, uh, the, the buildings and the people uh, in it will probably be memories. That's why um, I named it the future past. I want you to see, as I'm looking at the images here, you see how Mahadir is working with space, the spacing, how she is using the four corners, how she's framing the images how she is involved, okay, in this sign, okay? We have, you know what, the, uh, the blue van, the transportation is very specific to Ethiopian culture, lifestyle, the way of life here. Everything about the and also too, technically sound. Very, very, I mean, the colors, the framing, it's not crooked. She was looking at the lines, you know what? everything about this picture. We mentioned a uh, theory called the rule of thirds, and I think this exemplifies it. Look how far to one side she has the man in his wares. And the texture of the wall is incredible. That's why I like the, the contrast between him, the colors, and the wall. I think it's a very beautiful and very accomplished photograph. And for most of you to know, she has the text on the box because the screen is cut off, but she has information to this picture too, but it's on the top so you can't see it. But the lines, the rule of thirds, when you place, you should either place something on far left, far right, but never in the center. And she did that. And I'd like to know why you decided to do that. Why did you place him there? Because he seems to be still in the scene that you could have moved to left or right either way. Why did you place him there? The first thing is I was trying to keep the rule of thirds. Oh, so you know about also, the rule of thirds? Yes. Oh, cool. 
Go ahead, go ahead, my dear. You have a little bit more um, you want to say? Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to let some nose room uh, to the to the right so that um, um, the viewer will uh, um, will look at the picture and the um, his little mini shop. First thing uh, when they take a look at the picture. You have a thing about texture of walls. You seem to be very aware mm. of the background when you shoot these images. Look at the texture on that wall. Background. Person you're photographing. Okay. Subject. Spacing. Look at the colors. Everything. The positioning of the four young men. Everything. Yeah, and she's giving you enough space to see the wall, right? So she's not filling up the frame, and so you don't get enough sense of the wall, but the, the wall becomes an intricate part of the photograph's design. I'm not sure about the composition, but with regard to the organization, I think it has helped me a lot, um, because um, I didn't think of making this series at first. Um, I was not even sure what I'm shooting at the beginning of the, um, the workshop. But after that, uh, once I'm done with uh, shooting, um, it took me a while uh, and I changed my mind again and again so that I can uh, tell a story with all the 10 pictures that I have. Well, I'm still not comfortable with it, that's true, but um, I, now I have uh, more information than um, when I used to use a zoom lens, um, I have to crop. Uh, I have to do some cropping um, w when using the 35 millimeter lens. But I think I will probably used to get used to it in the future, so that um, I won't have to do cropping anymore. So, have you, you, this lens has taken you out of your comfort zone. Yes. <laughs> and would you say? You are getting to learn a little bit more. You're spending a little bit more time with the people you're photographing. Yes. Do you see a difference in your images, also to your process, mm -hmm. as well as to uh, how people are even responding to you? Now, with the zoom lens, um, with photographing with the zoom lens was much easier because I don't have to talk to anybody. Mm -hmm. But with a 35 millimeter lens, I have to get closer to people so that. Um, I can have some information and I can make the good pictures. But you see everybody, what, what Mahadir is looking for, when she is going out, she's specifically looking for certain backdrops. You see the importance of each backdrop in her photograph. You see how, okay, she comes in close sometimes. She takes a step back. As well as, too, you just heard her admit about the zoom lens, you know what, allowed her to keep some distance. But now, in engaging people and getting closer, she's getting photographs that she didn't get before. She's learning about the people. It's giving her a different perspective. So this, this photograph is excellent. And again, the next thing is that caption. That <laughs> caption is everything. Everything, people. Because think about this, everybody. Your work is going to be seen by people who know nothing about Ethiopia. Remember, you are making work for the world. We are doing this workshop to prep you for the industry and to do work to the industry standard and to make a living. This is the whole purpose of this workshop. And again, I want to say something else too, Mahadir, well done. Well done, you know what, well done, well done. And my sisters in the audience, ladies in the audience, some of you spoke to me about how difficult it was you felt, you know, to go out and make pictures, you, you needed support, you need somebody with you. Mahadir, did you, do this by, did you do this by yourself? Were you with somebody? Can you speak on a little bit about that process so everyone can, can hear? You was by yourself? Yes. You was by yourself. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, I photographed um, Merc Mercato, in Mercato, Piazza, and in Casanius too. 
Um, I was I was looking for um, people that have work and that can actually inspire other people that are not working to work, and um, and they have interesting stories. That's okay. Go ahead. But there is. Go ahead. What was about to say? Um, this picture um, is the is the was the first person I found. He was reading um, his magazine, and that was like the break point for me to go talk to someone. I, I usually don't talk to people, so um, <laughs> yeah. So I asked him if I can photograph him, and um, his friend came out of his shop and started talking to me and everything, and and. Um, Okay. Um, his name is Gazahin, and the guy on the, on the right is Moisen Fida. Um, he had um, his his shop for 30 years. He um, he grew up in Piazza, still is in Piazza, and and they were telling me about their concerns about um, the the places in front of across the street being demolished and and like this this person. Uh, Mohsen, he was really expressive, and he was pointing right across the street, like where the, demo the demolishing was going to take place, and um, I thought it was interesting. And they actually um, invited me in for a tea and raised some questions mm -hmm. to them and just took pictures of them as they um, had a conversation. Um, this gentleman's name is Yaman Landis. Um, he works in Mercato. He's 64 years old, and um, um, he had this shop for about 24 years. Um, and I, I usually raise these questions about all these places in Piazza and Mercato being demolished, and and um, they tell me about their concerns, and and they don't even know where they're going after afterwards. Okay. I found this um, this guy um, in the trunk, and he said um, he was a um, helper for the driver, and he hopes to be a driver in the future, and um, he likes his job. This is this gentleman's name is Noor Addis. Um, he has a he works with a group of people in in working with glasses and replacing spare parts. He has seven brothers and sisters. And he recently came back from Arab, and um, I asked him if, if it was better working there or here, and he said, um, if, if we can work hard here, we can be more successful and we can help grow our country. Mm. He actually um, asked me to photograph him uh, like this. So this, this picture I took in, um, in a market in Mercato. I just I was taking pictures around and, and he was speaking as I was taking pictures and um, I don't know I, I like the I like the composition so I took the picture. I wanted to focus on um, the little boy selling lottery tickets. There I, we see many of them in around Addis. They they came they come from the countryside to help their parents or support their siblings and everything, and, and nobody really notices them, so I saw them from far away and I took the picture. Uh, actually, this this was um, around um, my neighborhood. I was passing by in, in, in my parents' car and I saw him and I loved the texture, the everything, so <laughs> I took the picture and I liked the expression too. This picture I took um, in in Marcato, and um, this this place in the background looked abandoned, and I wanted I love the texture, and I asked the people who were sitting and um, drinking tea right there, and um, I asked them about the place, and they said it was closed um, about. 18, 18 years ago, 
when um, Ethiopia and Eritrea had a, a war and the owner was in Eritrea and so he had to abandon his shop. And, um, and, and it's currently government property. That's it. Personally, I, I like black and white pictures. Okay. And when you make a picture black and white, it's, 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 it's settled, so it, it's actually just, sorry. So, let me be sorry about, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So you said when you, you prefer black and white, number mm -hmm. one. Yes. Okay, you said number two, uh, you feel like black and white's a little bit more subtle and color is what, is a little bit more bold, you feel? Is, so explain, you know, exp expand on that, please. I want I want the concentration to be on the person I'm photographing. So, um, and and I um, I like how it the texture is when it's black and white. And yeah, and I'm uh, I'm trying to perfect my black and white. So I, I thought I should work on black and white zone. All right. Okay. I like the way that most of the photographs we've seen, I like the way you guys utilize your space. Spacing. Spacing is really good. Thank you. Yeah, also too, I'm seeing here again, I think, I don't think Teddy's here, the power of the portrait. <laughs> the power of the portrait. Uh, the power of really just, again, with every photograph Jerusalem presented, you heard a story. I mean, I am so impressed, and I must say so proud, so proud that you took the time because you took this photograph at a distance. You walked over to the people, introduced yourself, talked with them for a few minutes, and you just gave this photograph a whole new life. You found out the history, the history of this building, but the first compliment really goes to is to you for having the courage and seeing the significance and importance of not just taking this image as it was unfolding before your eyes, but to really go over and get a little bit more information that makes the picture better. So for me, when I first saw this picture, you know what? I was like, okay, this is all right. But as I was reading, as I was hearing you tell the story, I saw it and it hit me. And another reason why I wanted to bring this photograph up here is about, okay, again, the spacing. Now tell me, with the amount of street, the amount of sky, the building, everything you're seeing in here, would anybody think that this picture could be cropped? Do you think this picture could be made into a vertical even? I'm saying this to you about how I want you to see images. Thank you. Um, thinking about that, how many photographs did you take in Jerusalem of this particular um, scene as it was happening? I actually took this picture with my phone. Did that with your phone? Yes. and. Um, Actually, the first thing I saw was the, the guy crossing the street. But um, I, as I told you, I love the background, so I was interested in knowing what, what it meant. Because um, the guy, I couldn't talk to him because he was kind of... Exactly. Yeah, so... Um, um, can you repeat your question? It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. You did good, you did good. Everybody? Um, let's give a round of applause to Jerusalem. <laughs>